Hopefully this one turns out. I've had some uh, malfunctions I'll talk about in a sec. But I found this beautiful spot in the wash that's got some really nice in transition maple here. You know, it's pretty much a full palette of color here. And I really, I find myself really being attracted to that. You know, the ones that are just full on reds and stuff are beautiful too, but I think it's interesting when there's a, you know, transition of color in the tree. And that's kind of what's going on here. I think it's actually a pair of trees, but it just so happens that it works really well with a six by 12 format for my Horseman six by 12 back. So I'm shooting kind of a panorama and I'm using this fallen log uh, in the bottom of the wash here too as, a, as a, an additional element of interest. But it just frames up really beautifully uh, with my 90 millimeter Nikon lens here. That's giving me some trouble, unfortunately. But uh, I think I was able to get the exposure. The wash that's just below the tree and everything is just still pristine. It hasn't been walked on or anything. There's a little bit of footsteps, you know, further up in the wash, but this part that I've got framed up is, is nice and clean. These are kind of nestled in with a couple evergreen trees too. It gives you kind of, helps the color stand out against a darker background. I think the rook works really well. And of course the best part is, you know, the composition behind it has got a slab of sandstone that's in full sun that's bouncing light into the scene. So I'm getting lots of reflected light on this one. Looks really good. I'm shooting Velvia 50 on this one uh, and I've taken an entire roll of exposures. So on six by 12, it gives me six exposures. I've shot all, all six, so entire roll in this one scene. And that's because I have a seven Smith shoes with the cable release. So when I would hit the shutter, uh, it would stick and it wouldn't let go. So my uh, 90 millimeter lens is on a recess lens board and it's got a little wire that sticks down that you stick your cable release into and the wire inside of the recess board is actually what triggers the shutter. And that little chunk of wire is sticking inside the board. So here, once I get done filming the camera, I need to take that apart and see if I can repair that and get it to stop doing that. So as a result, my shutter speeds weren't accurate. Yeah, so I kept trying different combinations. And then because the sun is rising behind me and I'm in the shade here, mostly protected, except I'm on the sandstone that's getting full sun. So as the sun came up, as I was shooting and trying to figure out these issues, uh, my camera fell into direct sunlight. So I had a little bit of a lens flare coming in. So I had to try to, you know, block a little bit of that. In one spot, I was just standing off frame, hopefully off frame, trying to shield that with my head. <laughs> so there's a chance that I might get this back and find out that I got a, piece of my mug in the side of the composition. Um, but I got at least two exposures I know of that should be okay as far as lens flare. I'm just a little shaky on the exposure because of the problems I'm having here. But what I was going for was two seconds, F22. We'll see if that's actually what I accomplished. Uh, that should have been a pretty correct exposure. Uh, and it's just a corner of the wash, you know, where once again, you gotta play the timing game and just wait for the, there's a really, really calm breeze coming through here, but it's just enough to move the branches around. So I just waited for a second where, you know, everything was calm and then tried to fire the broken shutter. That was giving me a bunch of trouble. So, but then you luck, fingers crossed, at least one of these six exposures turned out. But either way, let's take a look at those exposures and see what I managed to get. Fortunately, despite all the troubles I had in the field, all of the exposures on this roll ended up being usable. Of course, a few of them were exposed a little brighter where the shutter hung open for just a little bit longer than it should have but it did manage to capture one or two that looks like they were exposed a little more correctly. I was pretty happy with the fallen log and the way that it fits in the frame, and that, combined with the background maple swooping into the right corner, seems to balance well with the left side of the frame with its dominant display of color. It seems it had enough reflected light to avoid the tree trunks going blue or the rocks in a sliver of wash in the bottom right. Overall, I think the scene fits the 6x12 format well, and despite all my troubles in the field, I think it turned out a success. But here's my edit, and as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.
We're in another one of these narrow more slot canyon parts of the wash. And in this one, there are some patterns in a wall that I found really interesting. The one you can see behind me has got this big hole blasted in it. I'm not sure if that's man-made or if that's a natural phenomenon, but there's a couple, couple spots in this wash that have similar holes like this. But it makes for kind of an interesting pattern because it's got all these lines kind of just spider webbing out from it. And that, that's what really grabbed my attention. Now there is some color in the scene. It's, most, it's all red rock, red sandstone with some lichens and stuff on it. But then you have sky color that's reflecting down in here because I'm in the shade. So that's going to push it more towards the magenta bluish side. And sometimes that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't mind that tone. But in this case, uh, that's, that's pretty much the predominant color. It's more monochromatic in my mind. So I'm shooting black and white negative film on this one, Delta 100 to be exact. Since aside from the color, you know, it's really just the, the patterns in a wall that really stood out to me that made me want to set up and shoot this. I'm also shooting with the six by 12 back. So this is a, another panorama crop. And I framed up just kind of this whole section here that looks like it's kind of blasted out. It does crop in the top and bottom of it, of course, you know, because it's, it's a panoramic view. So I've cut off a little bit of the spider webbing that comes down the bottom and then some of the wall up on the top. But I've done my best to try to match my plane of focus so I don't have to use too many movements in this, but there is, you know, extended depth of field with that hole, but that's going to go dark. So I'm not too worried if there's focus fall off in there because you, you won't be able to see a lot of detail in there anyway. There is some striations and like lines in the sandstone just from the way that the sandstone naturally formed, you know, in layers. And I tried my best to try to get that somewhat, you know, straight uh, in, the, in the frame. But if it's not perfect, that's okay. Because it's kind of more about this whole shape and the way it fits inside of the, the photograph as a whole. But I've taken two exposures. Uh, and those were two seconds at f22, each one. And this is with my 75 millimeter Fujinon f5.6 lens. Pretty wide for 4x5 or 6x12 in this case. Just pretty much the extended width of a 4x5 frame. It just crops the top and bottom off. So it's, it's still pretty wide view. But because it's a wider angle lens, uh, depth of field is a little better than it is on like a longer focal length. Uh, so F22 should be totally fine. And if there is some focus fall off, you know, like I said, in the shadow parts, that's totally fine. But from there, there's a couple other interesting patterns in this canyon that I wanted to explore, also with the six by 12 back. So I'm really just gonna pick the camera up and move it over because there's a couple more things I wanna shoot at also on black and white. Totally possible I may just consume the entire roll in here. We'll see. See how it goes. Here are those first two exposures on Delta 100. And I'll invert the video real quick so we can see what we're looking at. The hole did go really dark, but that's okay because I actually prefer that. And that combined with the line sprawling out from the center of it provide the interest in the photo. I had played around with positioning that hole in different parts of the frame, but ultimately ended up placing it on the right. And I think that was a good choice as the lines and cracks on the left-hand side of the image seem to give it almost a tail, and I think that's interesting. I think Delta 100 did a really good job on this subject. I was happy with where all the tones lie, and I think there's an appropriate amount of contrast. So here's my edit, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I moved just a handful of feet, probably 10, 15 feet from where I was shooting just a bit ago. And there's another really cool, interesting texture on the wall. But I think it makes for an interesting subject, especially on black and white, because uh, it just, you know, it's just the patterns. It strips all the color information. There's not a lot of color on it anyway. So it really kind of holds your attention to just the, the patterns and the waffle shape that's in the wall here. There is a chunk of what looks like probably harder sandstone that's kind of swooping off here to the right. Uh, and I took one exposure with a 75 millimeter lens, including that, and just trying to frame that, you know, along the, the six by 12 format so that it made an interesting photograph. But then I went ahead and switched lenses, went to 150 millimeters and cropped in just a little tighter so I could get just this one prominent part that's really full of holes. I have to acknowledge the fact that the roll film back does make this a lot easier, you know, to experiment and I can shoot a little more freely and not feel like you know, it's just not quite as much of a production to load and unload film. It doesn't cost as much either. So it's a little more liberating to be able to shoot a little looser style with it. 
of course, I don't want to get lazy doing that, but if, but it's 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 nice to be able to experiment a little bit here. So we had took one exposure with each focal length, but those are really long exposures. The 75 millimeter shot was 13 seconds at f22, and then the 150 millimeter lens. It's a little longer focal length, so my minimum aperture is a lot smaller, and it's also a little more problem for depth of field. So I went to that 32, and with reciprocity failure included, then it'd be in 30 seconds f32. That's four of my six shots that I get on a roll. I'm kind of looking to see if there's anything I want to try to expose the last two frames on. But in any case, here's those exposures, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Here's the 75 millimeter shot and the 150 millimeter. I'm still not sure if I have a preference here, but the wider shot that shows more versus the tighter crop that focuses more on the textures on the left. Given how abstract this scene is to begin with, I think I could go either way, and I'm not sure that the framing makes a whole lot of difference in this case. So I'm going to show you both of these photos, and you can let me know which framing you prefer in the comments down below. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps me make more videos just like this one. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below if you enjoyed this video. If you want to make sure you catch the rest of the videos from Zion this year, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll catch you in the next video.